juices. Oh, ah, oh, no. Oh my gosh, it's falling off. Oh, no. <laughs> I really didn't need this to be happening right now. <laughs> Howdy doodly dangly, folks. I uh, hope you're well. Uh, this today is a very exciting video. Uh, it's the follow up to the video I did the other day the Euros. Okay, the chicken Euros. I can be your Euro, baby. Sorry. I meant to do that on that video, but that video actually, as the moment right now I'm filming that, has not gone up onto the internet right now. And I already know some of you are gonna go, where is the French fries, man? I don't wanna put them in there, that's up to you. But if you do wanna put them in there, I recommend the thrice cooked chip videos, check that out on the channel as well. Today we are following on from the chicken gyro because we made the uh, stand with the skewer thing where we could carve off the chicken, oh my gosh, and I teased uh, a gadget that I've got. Oh, it's over there. Yeah. Now this thing uh, exists, you can get it on Amazon. I think it's about 70 to 80 pounds right now. Uh, so do check it out if you want. But I was looking for it and I actually found one on eBay. Yep, and it arrived in this FedEx bag. Uh, it was no other packaging around it. But other than that, the description said it was unused. I got it for a tenner, so 10 pounds. And the only thing, I'll show you in a minute, it's got a few dents and scratches in it, but I think we can have some fun with this. It's got like different attachments and things and randomly about a week after that arrived, I think the person that sold it to me was like, oh, I found this other bit for it because I had a box arrive simply with this sort of big spear thing in it. So uh, we are gonna do today three, in fact, tomorrow as well, three different things in this to see if it's any good. And then if you want, you could probably get one yourself. It's not a sponsored video, but we're gonna be doing some pork kebabs. We're then gonna rotisserie an entire chicken on there. And then as a follow-up to the Euro, you know, the theory of making the chicken kebab tower thing, we're actually gonna do a lamb kebab, like a proper one that you get in the shop that they carve off. Wow. So let's have a little look at it. <laughs> Quite a noisy thing. First up, I can see it has got a UK plug on it, which of course is peace of mind. We don't want any toaster situations. It's got a removable dish like this, which just sits on there. And effectively, like rotisserie cooking is probably one of the most oldest school formats of cooking, isn't it? The whole like pig with an apple in its mouth or whatever. Or you might want to put a big marrow on there instead if you're vegetarian. I'm sure they did that back in the day. Can you put an apple in a marrow? But I mean, other than that, it's in pretty good nick. This thing here is going to get super hot. It's got a timer on it of up to an hour but I can't adjust the heat. It's either on or off. So it's basically a big food sunbed. So it did come with an instruction booklet, but I think kind of famous last words for me, I think we're gonna be okay. Um, the main thing, everything happens on this pole, this stem. It goes in and then it sort of lifts into place there. But then you've got other attachments. So these spiky things that arrived, you can see they're square, right? So they will fit down and up on there so we can skewer a chicken into place. So I'm really glad that person decided to send me the second one. And also we've got a load of these skewers. They're actually quite sharp. Uh, so we can make kebab straight on there by threading these on, which have also got square clampage bits on them and holes where we can ram these down, thread the skewers on and cook away. And in fact, that's the first thing we're gonna do because they should in theory take the shortest amount of time. All I'm gonna do right now is start to make some kebabs. I've got some pork and peppers, so it's nice and basic. Ah, the kids are gonna eat well tonight. All right, that'll do. One nice kebab. Uh, I've got seven sticks, but I don't know if I've got enough ingredients for seven. We'll, we'll see how we get on. I'll see you in a minute. There we go, seven kebabs, and I only managed to pierce my finger on it about a billion times as I was spreading it on there. So pork and pepper, nice and simple, but I will brush it with a marinade once it cooks. But of course, we don't really know uh, what this thing is gonna do, <laughs> how fast it's gonna spin around, how I think it's gonna be hot. So what I'm gonna do is just thread this on and tighten it. I'm gonna line those brackets up. And I think I can adjust this, but I just want to get the kebabs on it first. <laughs> Hang on, I'm now trying to put the kebab through that and it's obviously going to... Oh, no, I can do it this way, I think. Yes. Let's try that again. I should be able to hang a kebab. Oh my gosh, it's falling off. It's actually falling off. Brilliant. Okay, let's get it nice and close like that at first. Let's try that again. Kebab's gonna go in. Come on, <laughs> it's like a game show. Right, we'll line that up in there and then we'll clamp that like that. Huh? Yes. Ooh. Yeah, this is totally working except some of the <laughs> stuff wants to fall off. Wow, we're gonna have a carousel. Sorry. Oh, no. 
I'm sure I could have just hung it up and done this. Let's have a try. Ah, oh, look at this doing it for me. There we go, look at it. It's on there, I think. Let's get out of the way. I obviously need to wash my hands. Um, I'm just going to turn it on. There's a timer down there. Normally something like this, if you're grilling it, about 20 minutes or so, 25. Um, but I'm going to try and brush it with a marinade. But let's turn it on. Okay, so I am running the power uh, to an extension cable along up there. I do, someone actually randomly asked me this the other day. I do have a power uh, source under the cupboard there, but I like to have like a nice, easy, accessible switch off point at the wall where if anything crazy happens. I mean, that, not that that does happen. Okay, so the power light should come on the minute I do a timer. I have no idea how fast this is gonna go. Uh, let's, let's see, it go from, it'll go about 30 minutes. It's got like a proper old school like bomb timer on it. Like, whoa, why are you smoking? No, no, don't do this. Please don't do this. Is it because it's the first time it's been used? I did wash it and everything. Ah, oh, no, I'm going to power on. I'm going to open a window, but I'm going to power on. I'll give you updates, live updates as they happen, particularly if the smoke stops. Oh, it stopped. It has stopped. I probably inhaled it all. Great. I haven't really got much more updates to say other than the smell's gone, uh, the window was open, and uh, it's now gone, look at that. We are in like lightsaber territory now. <laughs> From here, literally, I could probably get a suntan. I need to put my lotion on. That is super hot, but no sign of it really cooking yet. I really think this is gonna, I think this is gonna be amazing. And there's nothing there right now, but I think that this is gonna be like the fat tray. I'm not sure if you can see, but this one here, popped out. There we go, get back in there. It's like a magical cooking roundabout of food. I love it. Look at that. <laughs> Is that like the coolest thing you've ever seen? Wow. I'm gonna now baste it. In fact, let me keep the sexy lens on while I do this. I've got some barbecue sauce and I'm gonna just brush the kebabs. Gives me something to do to be honest because I'm literally just watching a, a meat version of the magic roundabout. I just don't feel like I need to talk right now. I feel like I need some sexy Barry White music over it. Okay, I've basted these loads. I think they're done. I'm gonna turn it off because one, this needs a rest. Two, it needs to cool down so I can wash it and get ready for the chicken. The time is still going. Never mind. I'm not gonna take them straight off because boy, they're gonna be hot. It's gonna be hotter than stinging your bottom on a radiator as a small child, which is a true story. I did that. It hurts. Don't do that. I don't know why I didn't have pants on but they're gonna be phenomenal. Literally five minutes later, sorry, I can't resist, I'm gonna try. Nah. Oh, good. I'm actually really amazed how quickly these have cooled down. Maybe just an extra cheeky brush of barbecue sauce just to liven it up again. What the heck was that noise? <laughs> it's cooling down, let it, let it have a break. It's got some work to do still. I'm so excited for this. Oh, wow. Oh, they're juicy, they're tender, they're tangy, and you can make them any way you want. Whatever you put on there, I think you'll absolutely love it. I was a bit worried, actually, because obviously the front side is going to get proper charred, which is great for me doing the carving off later. Uh, but the back wasn't really getting much attention, but gradually it picked up, and I'm pleased to report, relieved to report, that it is completely cooked through. Mm. Wow. Right, so I've just given the base bit a bit of a wash and a clean. It's completely clean, and the uh, stem, that's what I'm going to call it, the pole. The disky things, I'm going to put them and soak into the wash. They've got a bit more charred, but we don't need them anyway. The next thing is a chicken. Now, rotisserie chicken, I mean, you see them in the supermarkets. A lot of them have them now, just so good. I'm not going to uh, do any crazy marinades or anything like that at the moment. I'll probably baste it later on, but we need to get this on because really a chicken, I mean, this is a small one. Probably takes about 90 minutes to two hours typically. So we're going to spike it using these. So one's going to be the bum, one's going to be the top to hold it into place along our stem. So there's my chicken. I'm going to keep my string on it. It is a small chicken. I'm just kind of praying that when I stick it on there, it's not going to be too big because it's not a massive area there. It could brush against the grill. It could stop it moving around. Also, will it catch really quickly? I don't really want to put foil on it. We'll just see what happens. If you're a vegetarian or are not a fan of things being pushed up uh, bums, look away now. <laughs> look, it's caught the spikes holding it. <laughs> and then I do the opposite with this one. Push it down, let it skewer in place, just hold it. And then we lift it up onto that. Oh, can I get it any higher? I wonder if I can get it any higher. 
It doesn't, it doesn't matter because the heating element goes all the way down to the bottom. And that's no pun intended. Ah, ah. Oh yeah, that's better. Look at that. And then that should have sit in there. And we have got a skewered chicken. That's it. Gonna wash my hands. I'm gonna turn it on and it's gonna tick away. See you in a long time. <laughs> Behold the praying chicken. He is the knowledge and fountain of everything. Can't muck around, I've got some other stuff to do. All right, so this has only been 10 minutes and down the bottom there's juices coming out. It's really starting to smell great in here already. I love rotisserie chicken. But the last bit we're gonna do is a lamb donna uh, where we're gonna slice it off tomorrow. The lamb mince needs to be bonded overnight to that post, so we can't finish it just yet, but we're gonna make the mix now. Okay, we're gonna do this step away from the uh, kitchen because I don't wanna get anywhere near that inferno chicken. Wedding rings off. Two kilos of lamb mince. I mean, you can freestyle this any way you want, so I'm just gonna go for some of my favorite things. This is some cumin, mustard powder, mixed herbs, onion granules, bit of cayenne, garlic granules, which I've got a little bit on the table down there, whoops. And last but not least, some smoked paprika. I love paprika. And now just basically make sure you've got nothing to do like the door, if the, if the front door went right now, I'd probably kind of be stuck, but I'm gonna go for it. Oh my gosh. I'm almost sort of like kneading the meat here, but what we've got here is a nice consistent color. All those spices and herbs are blended in and we can keep this cool in the fridge for the time being. Right, that has had half an hour. I'm not sure if you can see there, but it's getting some really good color on there. I'm trying to keep my distance a little bit because it is basically spitting like a camel. The tray is catching loads of the juices. If you want, you could actually lift it and brush and baste in that. I'm gonna use a butter-based baste. Wow, that was hard to say. In this ramekin, there is some melted butter, some paprika, because I love paprika, and some pepper. I'm just finishing it off about 20 seconds in the microwave, because uh, I have to keep this butter fairly warm. But if I just mix this together and get some on my countertop, brilliant. I am actually fairly confident of this now, because, whoa, was there some sort of crazy spark then? Maybe that'll pick that up in the video. It looked like lightning. I mean, obviously this is electricity, but it's designed for this, so. We'll keep going, but be careful. So I'm just getting some of those juices. Oh, dro <laughs> dropping my camera and just uh, basting away. This is actually really, really fun. All right, I could keep doing this for absolute hours, but we are done. That's been two hours. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> <laughs> the trusty wooden spoon. <sighs> oh my gosh. Like a ninja turtle, look at that. <laughs> and I also need to clean my stem. Still hot. Ah, oh, beautiful. It's all cooked through, guys. That was my biggest worry. On the roast dinner chicken playlist, you've seen me carve a chicken before, but I've just chucked this up, you know, the legs, the wings, all that stuff, and of course the chicken breast, which is Actually, the thigh is my favorite part. It's on the Euro video, but... Oh my gosh. Oh, that is so tender, so moist. And I think, I think I'm in love with this machine. If only I wasn't married. Okay, what an incredible combination so far. That chicken is so good. And the kebabs actually, going back to um, a gadget I did a while ago. Do you remember the, the kebab tower where you sliced it? You combine that with this. That could work amazing. And people have actually asked me about doing videos where I actually cook an entire meal of gadgets. So maybe I will do that. If you want to see that, let me know. Last up, we've washed up our spear, our pole, our spike, whatever you want to call it. It's nice and clean because our meat, our lamb mince that we made earlier is going to cling to it. Okay, this might look a little bit weird, but uh, I think this is gonna help me. So we've got the base bit that had the chicken fat on it just a moment ago, we've given that a good old clean out. Uh, we've got a bowl, simply because this has a notch on the bottom that I can't take off. So if we sit it on here, it's actually a fairly sturdy base, which means I can sit my pole in there. It's quite wobbly actually. We get this out and that smells amazing. It's up in my fridge, like, what the hell is that? I wanna be in there. So we're getting our meat now. This is where it's gonna get dirty. We're gonna grab almost like burger patty shapes of it and thread it down through into the pole. There we go. You see, it, look, it looks a bit weird. 
I know. And of course, with the chicken gyro video, we could have just done the same. We could actually just drop chicken thighs through this and carve those, but we're doing this. Got a trusty old friend here, the Ratmaster 3000. And I'm gonna just rotate this on just to initially get a little bit of coverage on it. Okay, that'll do for now. Don't need the mixing bowl anymore. That is really nice and wrapped on there now. Just trying to make sure the ends are still protruding. Getting it compact around there so it clings to that pole. I mean, if it doesn't, we can use this dish for it to sit in and that should hold it up. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna chill this overnight in the fridge so it really does firm. Uh, and then I could have a kebab for breakfast. See you in the morning. 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 <laughs> you right? Morning. I'm fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine too, thanks for asking. Okay. I'm a bit worried about the kebab, Chloe. Why? Well, basically, um, when we did the gyro the other day, guys, we threaded the chicken on there. That's like a big old piece. I need it with other beefs and meat, meats and stuff like that, okay? Okay. But when we're doing it with mince, you just have to pack it on there. And the pole, the, the stem, what I called it yesterday, I don't know the technical term, it's kind of slippery. This is the kebab, okay? The bird is the kebab. And this is what I fear it's gonna do, okay? When we put it on that thing over there. But one thing that is good and what we discovered yesterday is it came with a few other apparatus, 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 whatever. We've got the apparatus. disc. Is that a type of food? No. We've got the disc, so we're going to put the bottom of the kebab on that and then we're going to skewer with the forks on there just to hold it in tight. I, I personally really would love to do it properly and just put it on there because I feel like once it cooks, it's going to swell and it will cling to the pole. Yeah? So, Chloe, you see? This is what I've done. I've put the base bottom circle on it and I've skewered it at the top. There's a fork plunged right in there, okay? Okay. <laughs> Does that smell good, Chloe? Yeah. You smell that, huh? It smells like pepperoni. It looks like a ginormous sausage. Give me down, give me down, give me down, let me bite it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> right, I'm going to cook it straight away. Right, I'm going to go for this. Go! It's, it's warming up, but it's not moving. What's going on? I really didn't need this to be happening right now. Come on, you got a spin. Oh, oh, oh yes, come on. Hmm, cook my pretty. Now that is doing some crazy things, but I generally think it's gonna swell up and that'll work. I'm so excited. Check this out, be careful. Uh, what, that was like black. I thought you meant the, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that cool? Yeah, I can feel the heat from here. Yeah, it's really hot, be careful. Oh my goodness, what is that? It's a kebab. Come on, you've probably eaten a few at 2 a.m. It looks like a sausage. Look. It looks like a bit of your leg. That's yeah. awesome. It kind of looks like a little alien. It's quite therapeutic to look at, isn't it? I mean, it looks great, but I just really don't want it to fall off. <laughs> it's going to collapse. It does. What well, it does? Yeah. We'll eat kebab off the floor, mate. Yay. I don't know if they do this in the kebab shops, but I've just been basting it every now and then. And that colour is phenomenal. Right, we are getting some insane colour on there. And the really cool thing with a kebab shop, because you're just like, is that cooked through? Yeah? Yeah. Well, I was thinking that too, and it's been there for like 90 minutes now. But what you tend to do in a kebab shop, isn't it? You're not going to eat the whole thing, so you're slicing that off and then it's gonna keep spinning around and getting that nice sort of charred edge. Okay. Okay. I believe you. So there's a slightly fatter side. I'm gonna wait for it to come around to that bit so I can carve some of that off. Dinner's ready. Oh, dinner's on, like my cookbook. Available worldwide on Amazon. So here goes, I'm gonna... Ah. Come on. Ah. Oh. There we go. Look, 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 taking slithers off of it. <laughs> look, it is cooked through. You just keep cutting like that. Ugh. Okay, I'm just kind of hacking this up. I need 
to get better at that, but you're getting the idea there that smells. How good does that smell? It smells very good. I've also noticed if you turn it back on again, it rotates the other way. So now we've taken those slices off. We can basically start it cooking again. But as it goes around, if you're feeling confident, you could go like that. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> one handed as well. Well, yeah, one hand. I'm like, are, are you going to help me? No, it's fine. You're just going to watch me I'm just gonna kill watch myself. You struggle. Thanks. Okay, so whilst that carries on cooking in the background, I've warmed up a flatbread, just like the Euro video. We'll put on some cucumber, some tomato, a load of our freshly charred donna meat. <laughs> Satsiki. Kept this from before, actually. Boom, chicka, wow, wow. Ha <laughs> ha. Right, there you go. Uh, yummy. Yeah, <laughs> yummy. You sure? It's spicy. Right, but. Oh, that's good. Oh. Is that good? <laughs> mm. Is that nice? Very nice. Oh, right, so I'm basically just holding this for you while you just <laughs> peck it. There you go. Thank you. Well, my family like it. This machine over there, that is absolutely amazing. I think that's probably one of my favorite gadgets of all time. Just like your you're right, it's really chicken, shish kebab, stoner kebabs, there's so much more you could do on it. And for me, getting it for a bargain on eBay, I, mean, I think it retail a little bit more, but for a party as a centerpiece, that could be amazing. I got the tomato up my nose. Smart up your nose. Yeah. Brilliant. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me, Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. I'm just continuing to carve this off. It's very fun indeed. So there we go. An absolute bargain for me for £10 on eBay. But if you want to get one anyway, loads and loads of uses. Have a look on the internet. Amazon definitely have them. Hey, Chloe. Mm -hmm. What do you call a kebab that's having a bad day? A sheesh kebab. I don't really get it. <laughs>